Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Chemistry by Provin. So, in the organic chemistry series, already we discussed about the structural isomerism and geometrical isomerism. Optical isomerism part 1, part 2 also we have discussed. So, now we are going to discuss about the part 3. In this video, we will discuss about the polarimeter experiment. So, how to identify the given molecule or given the compound is a optically active or optically inactive. If you see the setup of the polarimeter experiment, so there is a ordinary light is there. This is called as a ordinary light. So this ordinary light, ordinary light in the sense whatever the lights we say we are using, this means that it will travel like a random direction in all directions, in all plane it will travel. It will go into the all plane. So this light when you pass out through a nickel prism this is called as a it is made up of a nickel prism what is the use of this nickel prism so this is also called as a plane polarizing prism that means this ordinary light having the different planes it is having the prism makes the different planes into a single plane. That's why it is called as a plane polarizing prism. The prism which helps the ordinary light into a plane or single plane that is called as a plane polarizing. So, ordinary light passes through a nickel prism. So, it will convert it into one plane. You can see that. This is the light. Plane polarizing light. See ordinary light in a different direction converted into one direction so this is called as a ppl plane polarizer light single plane this plane polarizer light when we pass it through a some solution this is like a setup total setup is this one tube will be there in the tube we will take like a some organic solutions we will take okay organic solutions we will take here we can see i observed so you can see when an ordinary light passes through a nickel prism, it will convert the ordinary light into a plane polarized light. This plane polarized light is passed through a solution. Whatever the solution sample we will want to identify, na, whether it is optically active or optically inactive. This when we pass through a solution, that is called sample solution. Sample solution. When we pass through plane polarizer light through the sample solution for example if it is rotate see right like it is rotating like a vertical line but yes total it is rotated the solution is rotating the plane polarizer light so plane polarizer light like this whenever we pass it through the solutions just it is rotated if it is rotate that is called as a optically active if it is rotate that is called active some angle will be the left here from there we get from here we can observe i observe so what we have done simply i will tell so here you can see one ordinary light okay ordinary light this ordinary light we pass out through a nickel prism what is the use of nickel prism it will convert the ordinary light into plane polarized light ppl it converted into PPL, it will be converted. Plane polarizer light. This PPL, we pass it through a sample of solution. Sample of solution, which we identified. For example, it again it can be divided. If it is, if it is not rotate, if, it, if not rotate, if PPL, plane polarizer light not rotate, optically inactive. So we have taken down an ordinary light, passed through a nickel prism. After passing through the nickel prism, it is converted into plane polarized light. This plane polarized light, we pass through the sample of solution. If the sample of solution is rotate, that is called optically active. If it is not rotate, that is not optically inactive. So if plane polarized light rotate by the sample of solution. That is called as a optically active. Optically active. In the optically active also, there are the two types. 
Rotation also two types will be there. No, one is like a clockwise, another will be like a anti-clockwise. So, for example, if it is rotated clockwise, that means theta is like a positive. Anti-clockwise, theta is like a negative. If it is rotated clockwise, that is called as a dextrorotatory. That is called dextrorotatory. If it is rotated anti-clockwise, rotation should be happen. If it is rotated anti-clockwise, lever rotatory. Okay, simple. Ordinary light passes through the nickel prism. It will make the ordinary light into plane polarized light. This plane polarized passes through the sample of solution. If the sample of solutions rotate the plane polarized light, that is called optically active. If it is not rotate, optically inactive. If it is rotate clockwise. That is called dextro rotatory. If it is rotated anti-clockwise, that is called as a lever rotatory. Every time it is very difficult to set up this experiment. It will take a uh, set up and it is a time taking process. But by seeing the structure of molecule, by using the of the two properties, we can easily say that it is optically active or optically inactive. Only two properties, two condition. See the first two condition. P O S. What is meant by P O S? P O S is nothing but plane of symmetry. Plane of symmetry. Plane of symmetry in the sense the plane which divides the molecule into two equal halves. And if molecule is there in that particular molecule, if you pass the one or if you take the plane. It divided whether it is a horizontal or vertical or whatever maybe the plane which divides the molecule into two equal halves. That time we can say that the particular molecule or particular compound having the P O S plane of symmetry. The plane which divides which divides the molecule which divides the molecule. Into two equal halves. That is called as a plane of symmetry. We are calling. For example, I am taking like a A and A. So you can pass the plane, whether it is vertical or horizontal or whatever it may be. The I want the A should be like a equal halves. Equal half should be there. Then only that time I can call as a in that particular molecule P O S is present. So, for example, I can write now vertically. See, I am writing on plane. Equal halves only, no? Center, straight line. I am writing. For example, if you can see B. So here we can apply the plane of symmetry like this horizontal. You can see. So below up two equal halves. P O S is present in this. Why? Because B O S is nothing but the making into two equal halves. Any plane which making the equal halves that is called plane of symmetry. If plane of symmetry is there, the particular molecule or compound is a optically inactive. Maybe maximum optically inactive. We can see few example. So C two H five. H O H H O H C to H five. I want that this molecule into equal halves. Then only we can say that plane of symmetry is present. Plane of symmetry is present or optically inactive. So here you can see. I am drawing on plane. Whenever I am drawing on plane, you can see H O H C to H five. H O H C to H five. So what we call P O S is present. P O S present is optically inactive. So you can see here C two H five H O H H C H. You can see there is no plane of symmetry here. Otherwise, I can change like this here also. If you draw an also plane, if you draw an also, there is no equal. Why? Because H H O H H O H is okay. But what about here? Here C two H five is there. Here C H three is there. 
whenever if you make a plane whatever the atoms is there should be equal no should be like a similar only no here it is no similar so what will what pys is not present pys is not present automatically optically active so of course this is called as open chain can we check this pys plane of symmetry in ring of course you can check but in the odd number of system only you can check so ch3 h ch3 h equal half should i want the equal halves like this plane you can draw you can see here ch3 here also ch3 here h here h what is this pos is present pos is present in the sense optically optically it is a inactive so next you can see ch3 h h ch3 make up of equal half equal half this side ch3 is there that side h this side h is there this side ch3 so automatically what will happen is not equal half why because this side ch3 is there that side h is there so pos is not present pos is not present so pos is not present in the sense optically active so center of symmetry already pos we have done pos is not present optically pos is present optically inactive pos is not present optically active now you can see the center of symmetry this is uh, simply we can call it as a cos so this we can use the even number of rings we can use so for example you can see here i am taking methyl h methyl h so here here i am taking the one point so this point i am drawing the line diagonally oppositely so diagonally i am right i am drawing the one point i am drawing so here also i am drawing the opposite lines see point from which i am drawing the whenever i am drawing the line oppositely same groups are present before you can see that oppositely same groups see oppositely same groups here also oppositely same groups for example if you draw like this oppositely same groups if you draw the line diagonally oppositely same groups of me that is called as a cos is present CO is present optically inactive only. So you can write definitions. The point from which oppositely, right from which diagonally of lines drawn. opposite oppositely same groups meet, meet that is called as a cos so simple thing is draw the line oppositely of this one diagonally you can draw the line like this check is that oppositely opposite we have to check not the same opposite opposite same groups oppositely we have to check whether the same group for example here you can check methyl here you can methyl here hydrogen here hydrogen that time cos is present when cos present it is optically inactive okay this is called as a optically inactive so now you can see next one even number of rings only we can use the cos only we can use okay so for example in a given uh, compound pos is present cos is present if pos is present optically inactive if cos is present optically inactive okay okay for example 
POS not present, C COS is present. POS is not present, COS is present. POS not present, COS. Even though it is optically inactive. Next one you can see. POS is present, COS is not present. Optically inactive only. That means any one is present optically inactive. Optically, both are present also optically inactive. So COS not present. POS plane of symmetry not present. This is the one important. Optically active. Optically. Optically active. You can see optically active. This is what? COS should not be present, POS should not be present. Then only we can call it as a optically active. One example CH3 H OH H OH CH3. Open chain, check the plane of symmetry. Opposite equal of PO is present or not? Of course, PO is present. Optically inactive. Next one you can see CH3 H OH H iodine CH3. You can check. PO is present or not? PO yes is not present. No need to check the cause. Center of symmetry, no need to check. This is called open chain. No, no need to check. POS is not present. So, optically active. Okay. So, for example, in a given compound or a given molecule, only one chiral carbon is present. Already uploaded a video how to find out the chiral carbon. Only one chiral carbon is present. That is optically active or not. So, H, Br, CH3, C2, H1. Only one chiral carbon. Optically active or not. So, one chiral carbon is there. One chiral carbon present. One chiral carbon present. It is optically, optically active. One chiral carbon is present optically active. Okay. So, now you can see that we are taking the We are talking about the next one you can see enantiomers. What is mean by what is mean by enantiomers? So CH3 HOH C2H5 OH. For example, this compound, if you see in the mirror, is that a non-superimposable, non-superimposable mirror images. Non superimposable mirror images. For example, if you see in the mirror, mirror left will look like a right, right will look like a left. Same thing we can see in the, on the mirror, no? So, non superimposable mirror images. That means whatever we see. For example, uh, this is the one hand. If I, uh, if I see uh, in the mirror, it is looking like this only, right? But if I take this hand on this hand, both are not equal. No? Both are not equal. See, you can see thumb like this coming. So, same thing. Just slide this one and keep here. So, beta particle is CH3, CH3, okay. CH5 on plus, CH5 only is present. But on OH, if you take this one, on OH, H is present. On the H plus, OH is present. Just to take this one. That is called as a non superimposable mirror images. Non superimposable mirror images that is called as a enantiomers. That is called as a enantiomers. So, this is about the conditions for the optical isomerism. So, thank you for watching this video. Again, rest of the things we will discuss in the optical isomerism 4.